Hello there. In this video we're going to continue our discussion of some properties of differ integrals. So differ integrals. And we're going to be primarily focusing on the concentration of base points, which has sort of been a topic that we've sort of been just going along with, but we haven't really discussed any significance or uh, you know consequences of choosing different base points over another. So recall that we already proved that the riemann liouville fractional integral with base point minus infinity x of order alpha of the function uh, sine of x is equal to sine of x plus alpha pi over 2 and a few others. So I've gone and wrote down the other uh, three properties that we have discussed for the RL fractional integral. And here's one question I want you to sort of think about for the time being uh, before we get into the formal discussion. There's a property that these functions, sine, cosine, and e to the a to x, where a to is greater than zero, there's a property that each of these functions have that this function, x to the nu, does not. Take a moment and think about it, and we'll discuss that in this video. Alright, so we, before we get into the actual discussion of the base point of different integrals, uh, I just need to want to make one clarification. Uh, all of these identities are true, and we've proven them to be so. For alpha greater than or equal to zero, the order of the uh, integration, and also this notation i a x alpha of f of x. And this, so far, has been the riemann liouville uh, different integral of function f. There are, of course, other different integral uh, relationships, for example, the grinwald lentikoff which we've already discussed, and there's a couple others, such as Keputo and so on, that we'll definitely get in, into a serious discussion later. Um, but we've proven these results so far. So just recall the definition of RL. So we have integral from ax alpha of f of x is equal to 1 divided by gamma of alpha integral from a to x of x minus t uh, alpha minus 1 times f of t dt, right? So this is the RL different integral, right? So it's very easy to see that i minus infinity x of alpha of x to the nu, which in this case is going to be what? 1 divided by gamma alpha times the integral from a to x of x minus t, alpha minus 1, x to the nu, or t to the nu actually. So t to the nu, dt. So take a guess at what this integral is or is not. So if you know any properties about x to the nu, this integral does not converge. Or as some people say it diverges, or is equal to some infinite quantity, right? And we're assuming, uh, without loss of generality, that nu is greater than zero, right? So this is true, if and only if, right? So why is that? So let's just take a look at a couple of these x nu's, right? So we can look at, say, even functions, like x squared, odd functions like x cubed, so we're taking the integral from minus infinity to some number x, right? So we can say take this point to be x, right? So we take the integral from negative infinity to x, then we have this positive infinite quantity here, and for the odd case we have this negative infinite quantity there. So in either case, um, it diverges, right? Um, so that's that, right? So why is this true in particular? So this is because the function x to the nu for nu greater than zero is not bounded on the interval minus infinity to t, right? Where t is some finite number. And this is due to the in-behavior nature of just monomial functions or polynomial functions in general. So what about those other three functions that we talked about, right? So remember, sine x, cosine x, and e to the eta x for eta greater than zero are all bounded, right? Because sine x is bounded between negative one and one, 
uh, for all x, and same with cosine. And e to the x has that horizontal asymptote on the left, right? So this is bounded on the interval minus infinity to say some number t, right? So that's great. So now let's take a look at a fractional different integral of a function that possibly is not bounded on that interval. So let's take a look at um, the different integral, RL, uh, from minus infinity to x of order 1 half of e to the minus x, right? So if we use just the definition of the riemann liouville fractional integral, that's going to be what? So that's going to be 1 divided by gamma of half uh, times the integral from minus infinity up to x of x minus t to the alpha minus 1, so that's 1 half minus 1, which is negative 1 half, uh, and then it's going to be times e to the minus t dt, right? So how can we, and we can't use our property here because in this case eta is not greater than 0, eta is equal to minus 1, so we can't use that identity directly, right? So what do we have here? So I'm going to use uh, some u substitution. I'm going to let u be equal to x to the minus t. So this is the integral of t, so x is going to be a constant as far as I'm concerned. So du is going to be equal to minus dt, or dt is equal to minus du, right? So dt is equal to minus du. Let's work on these limits here. So when t is equal to x, we have that u is going to be equal to um, x minus x, which is 0. And when t is equal to minus infinity, keep in mind x is just a fixed number here. So we have uh, x fixed number, which is finite, minus negative infinity. So we have a positive infinite quantity plus some finite number. So that's going to force us into the positive infinite realm. right? So those are going to be our limits of integration. All right, so what else do we have going on here? So, uh, so u is equal to x minus t. So that means uh, u minus x is going to be equal to minus t as well. Right? So we can replace that there. All right, so let's rewrite this integral. So therefore, the riemann liouville fractional integral with base point minus infinity, and this is the primary talk of this problem, right? So e to the minus x is equal to 1 over gamma half, and we have the integral from positive infinity to 0 of u to the power, so we haven't changed this power of negative one-half, so we're just going to keep that there, negative one-half, and then we have e to the power u minus x, and then dt is equal to minus du. So we can use this minus sign to reverse our limits to be a little bit more natural. Uh, we can decompose e to the u minus x to be e to the u times e to the minus x. And since this is a integral of u, we can factor e to the minus x out and pull him out as just a constant with respect to the integral. So yeah, this is just going to be equal to e to the minus x all over gamma alpha times the integral from 0 to infinity of u to the 1 minus 1 half if you want to try and form this into a gamma function. But I'm just going to leave this as that. And then we just have e to the u du. Right? So let's just take a look at this function here. I'm just going to call this uh, f of u. Right? You can call it whatever you want. So if I graph this, so we're on the interval of 0 to infinity, so I'm only going to consider the positive x-axis. So if we graph this, we're going to have something that looks like this, right? because it's an exponential growth, because as u goes to infinity, this, uh, this other thing is insignificant. All right, so we have this point here which one can find to be 1 half. So this is the u-axis, this is the f of u-axis, and this is my curve f. So this function, of course, has a vertical asymptote at x at u is equal to 0. So if we were to calculate this area, this is going to be equal to some positive infinite uh, size, right? And since this curve is always greater than 0, it's pretty much uh, easy to see that the Cauchy principal value of this integral, minus infinity to x, of 1 half of e to the minus x, is going to be equal to uh, infinity or does not exist. And this is going to be true for all x uh, greater than 0. That's obvious to see. Just the integral and also the principal value, right? So why don't we bring up principal value in this discussion? So I'm just going to draw a picture of another function. 
So let us assume we have a vertical asymptote at zero and we have something like that, right? So if we want to find, so I'm going to call this like g, right? So this is going to be my g of x-axis and this is going to be my x-axis. Let's assume I want to find the fractional different integral from minus infinity to x of some order alpha of g of x, right? Um, so in that case, uh, as long as this function transforms uh, into like an integral from zero to infinity type of deal, um, pretty much what we're going to have is some negative infinite quantity here, right? So I'm just going to call this, say, negative omega, right? So under certain conditions, you can find some number, you can call it, say, kappa, such that the integral from kappa to infinity is the same size infinity but the opposite signs, right? So one can see that the principal value from zero to infinity of this function, say g of x dx, right, whatever it is, uh, is just going to be equal to the integral, and I'm just going to call this, say, alpha, it's just going to be equal to the integral from alpha to kappa of g of x dx, right, because it's pretty much these two values that sort of go off to infinity but in the same magnitude sort of cancel uh, once you add them together, right? So you're just going to be left with this region here, right? Uh, which we can then associate a number uh, to that particular quantity. So the, under certain circumstances when the Riemann integral does diverge, you can still assign a principal value to it uh, and get some meaning out uh, whenever you want to, right? So principal values definitely uh, tell us something about the bounded nature uh, of this thing. And that's true both for the riemann louville and also the grumont linnikoff derivative, right? So remember that dAx of order alpha of some function, right? And typically we only care about when alpha is between 0 and 1, uh, is equal to the limit as n goes to infinity of n divided by x minus a order alpha times the sum from l is equal to 0 to n of the alternating quotient uh, negative 1 to the L, gamma alpha plus 1 over gamma alpha plus 1 minus L, right? F of, uh, what was it, x minus L over n times x minus a, right? So we have two instances of our base point A, for which pretty much uh, go into our increment size for our Riemann sum when we actually go in the backwards direction, right? And this is grunwald letnikov right? And remember, we proved uh, using some clever tricks from algebra that this representation d minus alpha is equivalent to i alpha ax right so here we're looking at the riemann louville uh, different integral which of course is equal to one divided by gamma alpha times the integral from a to x of x minus t to the alpha minus one times f of t dt right so again we have one instance of our base point a um, which, of course, uh, will generate different answers if you vary that base point, right? So both the grumman lenikov and riemann louville do have this, well, one could say, downside, right? Because if I give you different base points, then you have different values over different integrals at a particular point of a particular function, right? And sometimes that's not good or nice to a lot of people, right? Um, so what happens when these with a particular base point in mind, what does it mean for this expression dAx alpha to be equal to uh, infinity or not finite, right? Or plus or minus, or does not exist, depending on your notation. So as we see, one of the implications is it implies unboundedness of the function, let's call it f, of f of x on the integral a to x, right? And it's possible that a need not be infinite or negative infinity in order for this function to be unbounded. Uh, 1 over x is a very easy example of that, right? Um, so another thing that one wants to question is the meaning of, say, d a x alpha of f of x versus d b x alpha of some function. And let's assume that a is not equal to b, right? Is there a, you know, meaningful difference 
uh, between dAx and dBx, so different base points, right? Of course, they are not equal. That's very trivial from the integral um, definitions. Um, but is it possible that we can still gain some meaning or gain some interpretation that assuming that both of these are finite, is there some actual meaning behind these things? So in the next video, we're going to actually go into an investigation to sort of see what we can find from these things. Hope you enjoyed.